Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and the second video in the Bolt Action Basic series. In the last video we looked at using the army book to build your Bolt Action army. In this video we're going to look at two core mechanics that relate to how you use your army in game to Bolt Action. These are troop quality and the orders you can assign to your troops. In the previous video I made reference to choosing a mixture of veteran and regular troops when building that army. But what does this actually mean? In Bolt Action, there are three types of units, quality, and to demonstrate just what these are and how they work, I'm going to run through three different infantry sections and explain their unit quality and the impact this quality has on how they operate in-game. First, we have this unit of Ostruppen from my late war German army, and I'll use these to explain the first of the unit qualities, inexperienced. Units that are inexperienced are often troops that have never seen combat, they could be reluctantly conscripted soldiers or have had no or somewhat limited training. Let's have a look at what this means for fielding them in games of bolt action. The main factors are the chances of becoming a casualty, obeying orders when under fire, or sticking around when the going gets tough. We'll be looking at combat mechanics in the next video, but very briefly, when a unit is fired at, a die is rolled for each successful hit to determine how many casualties are sustained. For a model to be removed as a casualty, you need to roll equal to or higher than its value on the damage chart in the bolt action rulebook. Inexperienced troops become casualties and are removed from the game on the roll of a three or more. This represents them not being the greatest at using cover, reacting to fire, and so they're more likely to become casualties than troops with better quality. Now when a unit starts to receive hits, pins are assigned to that unit. These pins will, get, will again be outlined in the next video, but they represent the unit being shot at losing morale and generally being a bit reluctant to follow orders. If a unit has accrued pins and the player wants to assign that unit an order, it must pass an order test to be able to do so. Orders will be outlined later in this video, but essentially the lower the troop quality, the more difficult it will be to have troops follow orders when pins have been assigned as a result of being fired at. Inexperienced units have a morale of 8. This means that if it has received one pin marker, you will need to roll 7 or less on 2d6, uh, less than 6 with 2 pins, and so on. Now, should the roll be failed, the unit will stay where it is and play no part in that turn. This morale level will also be a factor when units start to lose more and more casualties. As with order tests, testing against the unit's morale when pins have been added gets more difficult and will often see units flee in the face of enemy fire. So with Inexperienced troops covered, let's move on to the next unit quality, regular. Now I'll be using this unit of, US, of Marines from my USMC uh, as a regular unit. Now units that are deemed to be regular are troops that have experienced some amount of combat and have generally received some basic training. Now in games of bolt action, you will often see the core spine of an army is made up of regular troops and these are often the mainstay of an army. They fare a bit better than inexperienced troops in that they become casualties on the roll of a 4 or higher, and will test for orders of morale using their base morale value of 9. These higher numbers generally give regular troops a bit more staying power, and allow them a better chance of following orders when under fire. For example, a regular unit that has incurred one pin marker will need to roll 8 or less on 2d6 to be to be assigned an order. This represents their combat experience, training, and ability to react under fire. So now that we have covered inexperienced and regular unit qualities, it's time to move on to the third and final quality, veteran. To represent a unit of veteran troops, I will be using this section of Falschenjäger. Now veteran units are deemed to be those troops that have seen extensive levels of combat or maybe specialists in their field, such as these Falschenjäger paratroopers. They are wily and experienced soldiers across different campaigns and as such are a lot tougher and more reliable than other units. Veteran troops become casualties on the roll of five or more and make order and morale test against a base value morale of value of 10. This represents these, val these troops being the elite, making excellent use of cover and generally being more aware in the middle of combat. A veteran unit that has incurred one pin marker will need to roll nine or less on 2d6 when attempting to pass an order test. As you can probably see, veteran troops will often take less casualties and follow orders better than the other two qualities. An important point that I touched on in my previous army building video is that the better the troop quality, the more points you are going to pay for the individual troop or unit as a whole, so this is something to always consider. 
So now that we know what different qualities the units can have, it's time to look at assigning orders. Now for every unit in your army, you need to assign it some form of dice, marker or chit. Now I'm going to be using order dice moving forward in these videos, but any type of marker or token will do. At the start of each turn, all the order dice are placed in a bag and these are removed one by one to determine which side gets to activate a unit at that time. So let's look at the six orders that can be assigned to a unit. Advance. A unit that has been assigned an advance order will be able to move and fire. As you can imagine, advancing and firing can be difficult, so units will incur a modifier when firing after hit has moved. Run. A unit that has been assigned a run order can move at double its normal movement allowance, but will be unable to fire any of its weapons that turn. This represents the unit sacrificing fire for speed to move away from danger, or to take up firing positions for the next turn. Fire. When a unit is assigned a fire order, the unit does not move, but stays still and fires at the opposition. Rally. When a unit is assigned a rally order, just like the fire order, the unit does not move. Instead of moving or firing, the unit will attempt to rally, which means taking a breather and generally taking a brief pause in the action. Using a rally order gives that unit the opportunity to remove pins that they may have incurred in previous turns. Down. When a unit is assigned a down order, the unit again does not move or fire, but they take cover instead. A unit that is classed as being down benefits from an additional modifier when being fired at to represent the, the further use of cover and also for staying low to the ground. And lastly, ambush. A unit that has been assigned an ambush order does not move or fire, but instead concentrates on taking up firing positions. So a unit in ambush can opt to open fire during an opponent's activation or movement phase. Now, they, they are the six different types of orders that can be assigned to a unit during a turn. What I would say, though, is that it was a very basic overview of the orders, and there are several different nuances in the main game when assigning orders to your troops. I would definitely recommend picking up a copy of the Bolt Action Rulebook, which goes into a lot more detail in explaining the orders and how these operate during games of Bolt Action. So with that, that's troop quality and orders now covered as part of the Bolt Action Basics. I will link to the previous video in the description below, and I've also created a separate playlist where these videos will be kept. Now, I hope you found this second Bolt Action Basics video helpful, and if you have any comments or questions, just leave them below, and I will certainly respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching, take care, may your dice roll well, and I shall catch you all in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.